Welcome back to Math for Game Developers, where this week we are going to continue in our series about optimization. And we are going to get away from examining um, algorithms. While algorithms are important, there's a lot of material on algorithms and um, books, and, and they tend to focus on algorithms in algorithm design courses if you take a, like a university course or a course on Coursera or something like that. Um, and while, while focusing on the running time of an algorithm is important, it's also important to remember these constants, these k's that we kind of ignore. We just, we just remove them when we're looking at the asymptotic time of, of an algorithm. But now um, I think a lot of game developers would agree with me if I said that focusing on those constants is actually very important. It can reduce the um, the running time of your program of your game a great deal so for the next few videos we're going to look at some techniques to reduce the constants of an algorithm and we're going to start with loop unrolling loop unrolling okay and the example that I'm going to use is going to be division, let's say we want to do, uh, let's say something like a over b, and we only care about integer division, and we don't care about the remainder, okay? So, for example, 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3, but 9 divided by 2 is going to be 4. Normally it would be 4.5, but we're simplifying this because I only care about the loop unrolling. So we have this equation, a equals bq plus r. Where if I have a and b and I'm trying to divide a by b, all I have to do is find the largest integer q and the smallest integer r that can satisfy this equation. So here's an example of that. Okay, here's my number line, 0 and uh, a. And then how many multiples of b will fit, let's say this is b, how many multiples of b will fit? I should make my b not so perfectly. Here we go. Here's a b, and here's another b. And you can see we can only fit two b's in here. If I add another b, it will have to go past a. It'll be somewhere over here at 3b. OK? So the answer here is 2. a divided by b is 2 because we can fit two b's inside of a. So let's write an algorithm that can find this, oh, and this means q is 2. Uh, q equals 2. So 2 is my answer because we can fit 2 b's inside of a. So let's make a divide algorithm that takes a and divides it by b. I'm going to start with q equals 0, so q is right here, okay? And then as long as I can add b and still stay less than a, then I will add one to Q. That is my very simple algorithm. I have QB, if that is less than or equal to A, when I add B, then I increment Q by one, okay? And then right here, Q is the answer, return Q. If I wanted to, I could calculate the remainder. It would be uh, a minus q times b, but I don't care about the remainder in this case. I only care about q. So basically what I'm doing here is I see that if I add b, I'm still less than a. So then I say uh, q equals q plus 1. And then I can still add b and be less than a. So I say q plus 1 again, and now q is 2. But now I cannot add b without being less than a, so the answer is 2. That's my entire algorithm. Now, that's a very nice algorithm, but I can make it twice as fast, okay? This, in fact, the running time of this algorithm, let's take a look at the running time of this algorithm. It's O of N. Well, I guess I should say it's O of A. It's linear in the length of the number that you're dividing, okay? Now I'm going to write another O of A algorithm and I'm going to do it in pink. 
that even though the running time is the exact same, this is going to run twice as fast. Twice as fast. So we're going to start with q equals 0, and we're going to do the same while condition. While qb plus b is less than or equal to a. But now I'm just going to do this increment twice. And then at the end, if I have overshot my goal, uh, this should be QB is greater than A, then I back it up one. Okay? So this is a little bit less work because we only have to do one comparison, one test here, for every two increments. Whereas here I have to do one test for every increment. And of course, I'm sure you can see that if I just get rid of this one, I'll do it in a slightly different color here. If I get rid of this one and add two here, instead of one, then I get to do one addition for every test. So here, where I'm doing test, addition, test, addition, here I'm only doing one test addition, I'm doing the same amount of work. This much work is equivalent to this much work. If I do two more test additions, then here I only have to do one test addition to do the same amount of work. And this is called 2x loop unrolling. And that's it. Uh, again, this is a little bit of a contrived example because we have a division operation and as part of the C language, so we don't really need to do this. And optimizations we're going to see in real code never really quite take this form, but there are reasons I'm doing it this way. One, this is going to be the basis of a lot of later techniques that we're going to do. For two, I want to show you how much smarter we are than the compiler because the compiler cannot do this optimization. Uh, three, I want to show you that even though the algorithmic running time of this, these two procedures is the exact same, divide two will be twice as fast. And four, this question has actually been asked to me in an interview uh, for a job at a video game company. So it is relevant to what we're doing. So let's go to the code section and see it be twice as fast. All right, now we're looking at some code. Uh, I generate A and B, two random numbers, except you'll see that A could be any random number. And uh, remember the maximum this empty rand procedure can put out is something like uh, like 2 billion or something like that. So this is going to be a very large number. Whereas for B, we make it a very small number. Okay, so that will that will test our algorithm uh, at its hardest. Make it run the longest amount of time because we'll, we're going to have to do a lot of loops to find the answer, which is good. Okay, so let's start writing our algorithm while Q times B plus B is less than or equal to A. Then we increment equals q plus 1. We increment q by 1. And we're going to do the same thing down here, except we're going to increment it by 2. Now, I don't know if I explained this well in the math part of the video. Incrementing it by 2 creates the possibility that we could overrun a. Okay, We never want q times b to be bigger than a, because this is a division algorithm. We always want it to be um, we want q to be the biggest number, such that multiplying by b is less than a. So we can detect that really easily. We just say q times b, if it got bigger than a, then we just back q out a little bit by subtracting 1. Um, and that's a little bit of a hack, but as you're about to see, it will make this algorithm about twice as fast. So um, let's take a look up here again really quick. We do have this set to release, so we are letting the compiler take its best stab at this, um, at optimizing these loops before we, uh, you know, even before our optimizations go in. So let's do this and take a look at what it says. So I print these sums out because um, if you don't output some result of the algorithm, then the compiler will optimize it away completely and it will all be a no-op and then you'll get zero milliseconds for everything. 
So that's just there to make sure the compiler doesn't throw away all our code. But you can see that the normal algorithm, its time was 193 milliseconds. And when we did the 2x unrolling, we reduced that to almost half, by almost half, to 98 milliseconds. So probably what you're thinking now is why can't we do this more? I mean, we've already cut the amount of work that we have to do in half, which is pretty, uh, pretty amazing, I think. But why can't we do it more? Why can't we say four here instead of two? And then uh, where you've cut the amount of work that we have to do by a quarter. And if we do that, well, we'll have to turn this into a while loop to fix it up at the end to make sure we don't run over the correct value. But this should uh, run in a quarter the amount of time, right? And as it turns out, yes, it does. Again, this is a contrived example, so you won't get speedups like this in real code. Um, uh, where's the button? Here. But the compiler was not able to catch this optimization at all. And uh, now we went from almost 200 milliseconds to almost 50 milliseconds, which indeed is a speed up of about um, four times, 4x. So we did a 4x loop on roll there, and we got a speed up of about 4x. So that's the basics of loop unrolling. And catch me next week. We're going to continue to examine the constants of our, of our algorithm of the running times of our algorithms and figuring out how to reduce them so that our programs run faster. See you next time.